the screenwriter tasked with adapting a literary classic. It's a thankless, damned if you do, damned if you don't predicament in which everything will be compared invidiously to the original. Trying too hard to parallel its effects, on the other hand, risks losing audiences by emphasizing literary values of questionable cinematic appeal. Worse, such prestige adaptations often come off as little better than forcing audiences to eat their cultural vegetables. MGM's 1949 adaptation of Gustave Flaubert's novel Madame Bovary is certainly a serious, handsome, A-budget production. It even begins with a title card trumpeting the film as partial celebration of Metro's silver anniversary. Made at the peak of the studio's reputation, there's little doubt that, questions of motive aside, the film is a sincere effort to do the novel justice with no expenses spared. Scenarist Robert Ardrey gives it a good go. His loose adaptation preserves the important action and most of the characters. In an unusual approach, he frames the film with Flaubert's, James Mason, defense at his obscenity trial. Thus, from the first, Emma, Jennifer Jones, is explicitly treated and defended as a fiction. By objectifying Emma's weaknesses somewhat, this device mirrors Flaubert's ambivalent oscillation between sympathy at feminine susceptibility to romantic fantasy and criticism of the disastrous results when women expect similar gratification from reality. Despite this sophistication, however, there is an unresolvable contradiction at work. Flaubert was a pioneering realist who sought to look at Emma as an example of a contemporary 1850s social phenomenon greater than her personal drama, but without moralizing. To fulfill that purpose by updating the material with contemporary examples would mean rewriting the story beyond recognition, but recreating the mid-19th century on the back lot is realistic only in physical details. After all, the world has moved on. As a result, the film is almost inevitably an example of the idealized popular culture that Flaubert criticized. The filmmakers keep the story's unhappy ending, but their lush efforts at superficial fidelity mute the criticism of romantic excess by duplicating it. It is telling that for all the scenarists' ingenuity and respect, Madame Bovary comes alive most powerfully in those purely cinematic moments that take advantage of the production's ample resources. If Vincent Minnelli was a questionable choice to direct a realistic drama, in those moments when he has a chance to exploit his talents fully, the movie silences any concern about fidelity to the novel. We are simply swept away by a movie. For example, the vibrantly heady waltz sequence when Emma first meets her lover Rodolphe, Louis Jordan, far exceeds Flaubert's richly detailed description. At that moment, it hardly matters whether the experience is an example of the emotional exploitation criticized by the novelist. With swooning music, gliding camera moves, costume dancers, baroque decor, and sparkling, perfectly timed cuts, Minnelli and company raise the film to a glittering formal ecstasy that, in its sensuous, exhilarating way, is just as serious as Flaubert's dour intentions.